Hello and welcome back, Focus Outer Family. My name is Michael Yendo, and if you're here, you're here to learn about AWS Amplify, front-end development, and serverless technologies. Now, today, I gotta, I gotta admit, you know what, let me pause. I just got back from Seattle. I spent a week there with the Amplify team. It was amazing. Quick little update. I've never been to Seattle before, uh, and I'm very fortunate that I got to take my wife. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because there was just so much that I thought I should share it with everybody. I should go ahead and uh, take photos, post them up, but I wanted to do so in a way that encompass Amplify. Well, I'm happy to report that with the new addition to the Amplify family, we have Amplify Map View, as well as Amplify Geocoder. These are React components that you can add to your applications, so that way you can display data uh, in a secure, managed, and super, super easy way inside of any of your React apps. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Let me just go ahead and give you a quick demo of what we got going on. So over in our application, you can see that uh, I have Seattle here. This is the application we're gonna be building. And when I click on one, uh, you can see that we had a team dinner. It was an amazing time and it was just super, super fun to be hanging out with everybody in real life. And um, other locations here, you know, I visited Pike Place. If you're from Seattle, you know where this is. One of the best uh, farmer's markets in the world. And the food was just, amazing down here i also took my very first ferry ride that's right i i've never taken a ferry ride before um so i was fortunate that my wife and i got to spend a day away from the city and enjoy bainbridge so switching things up that's what we're going to be talking about today not so much my seattle trip but how do you build out this application right here so that sounds good to you let's go ahead and dive in Okay, so first things first, we're gonna do a little bit of setup here, and I'm just gonna say npx create React app. We'll just be using a React application today. And uh, we're gonna call this my Seattle trip. So I'm gonna set this up and let it do its thing. Uh, from here, I'll go ahead and catch you as soon as this build gets done proceeding. All right, looks like my build just went ahead and got done. Let me go ahead and clear this out. And I do wanna go ahead and install a few dependencies. Uh, the first one is going to be AWS Amplify. That's just going to be connecting our front end to our back end. Next one is going to be the Amplify component library. We're going to be making use of that today. Uh, Amplify uh, slash UI React. And then next, we're going to be bringing in uh, React Map GL. And the reason we're going to be using this is because even though Amplify gives us the map and the geocoder, uh, we can still make use of the whole ecosystem of React components out there that are made to be used with map applications. So we get that set up. I'm going to go ahead and let that install. I'll go ahead and catch you as soon as this is done. Okay, so that's all finished. From here, let's go ahead and initialize our application with Amplify just by running Amplify init. Now, if you're wondering what kind of version I'm running on, uh, I strongly suggest getting up to the latest, which is 8.0.0. .0 .0. Uh, so that way, when you run Amplify init, I can say dash Y is going to detect that I am in a React application, as you can see right there. It knows that I'm using VS Code, which is super, super cool. And it has all the proper configs already set up for me. I'm gonna go ahead and let this build, process, and upload uh, my starter template to AWS, and I'll catch you as soon as it's done. All right, we got that all taken care of, and it looks like now we're ready to start adding in some categories. I'm gonna kick things off by adding in our first category, which is going to be Amplify Add Geo. Now, the cool thing about adding Geo is that it needs Cognito under the hood. So as soon as I say, hey, I need a map inside of my application, uh, it's like, yeah, you need to set up some kind of authentication service uh, using Cognito because it needs to know, are you going to be allowing guests uh, or signed in users to be accessing this map? So I do wanna go ahead and add auth. Uh, the default config is fine. The thing to note is that I'm actually not gonna be using Cognito in my application. Uh, in the sense that I'm going to have users sign in, I just need this set up so that our map is aware that guests do have the ability to view the map. I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. The name is going to be something like Seattle Trip. Just like that. And then here I'm going to specify authorize and guest users can access this. Uh, let's take a peek at some of the advanced settings. So if I select yes here, uh, the default is going to be a streets map. 
Now in the future, I think it's going to be changed to navigation, but I'm going to select that here just so that you can see that's really all you can do in the advanced steps. Clearing this out, I'm going to go ahead and add in one more geo service. I'm going to say amplify add geo. We're not going to get to this one until the end, but it's going to be location search. Uh, and I'm going to select the defaults here. It's really not too important. So authorize and guest users can access it. And in terms of advanced settings, everything looks good. I'm not going to be storing the location services themselves, uh, but this is something that we're going to talk about later on, depending on what kind of application you're building, you might want to do that. So I'm going to select no, and that's really all there is. Running Amplify Push is going to go ahead and let me know what services I have configured. I'm thinking it's going to say off and then two geo categories. And yep, that's exactly what we got here. Looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and continue. And this is going to push everything up to AWS. And from here, I can pretty much just develop my UI inside of my application. So I'll catch you when the build is done over in VS Code. All right, so I went ahead and got the build all the way pushed up to AWS. Some of you probably caught the mistake that I made, which was I was installing packages and getting Amplify set up, and I wasn't even in the directory that I was supposed to be in. So if you caught that, good on you. You're 10 times better than I am. Uh, but I went ahead and fixed that. Let's go ahead and get going here. Now, I'm not up to speed on React 18 all that much. But I know they took away React DOM render. That's this portion right here as of React 18. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in some code, which is going to be what we are supposed to be using these days if we're going to be considered part of the cool kids group. Pretty much what we're looking at is going to be this stuff right here, where we have this whole create root aspect. Again, this is just React 18 stuff. At the end of the day, it's still boilerplate. Uh, so we have our AWS config being brought in. That is part of this AWS exports folder over here. And then um, once we go back to our index page, we're just sort of tying everything together with this Amplify provider. And this is coming from our component library right here. Pretty much boilerplate stuff. Let's go ahead and move on and get into the actual mapping part of our application. So I'm going to head over to our app.js. And just for the sake of things, let's go ahead and clear out everything inside of this div and get rid of the imports at the top. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in our own imports, which are going to be these right here. And we're going to be making use of these throughout this tutorial. But as you can see, we're bringing in some of the primitives from our component library. This is flex heading, but then we also have map view and map view is going to be the new component that allows us to easily add a map to our application. And when I say easy, I mean, we're really just going to import it and then add in uh, a line with some of the config options here. So it's pretty nice. Now we're going to go ahead and configure our app uh, just by pasting in some options here. And we're going to walk through this together so that way you get a sense of, of what's happening here. Uh, we have this location data and notice that we don't have that imported. So let's go ahead and create this real quick. Uh, this is just going to be an array that we can map over. But let's sort of walk through this. So we have a view that's essentially just a div. Uh, we have a flex component, which is a div with the display of flex. And we're basically saying, hey, render in and keep it centered uh, a heading, which is going to say amplify Seattle visit, and then bring in our map. And notice that when it comes to adding a map to our application, this is all we have to do. We give it an initial view, and then you can also subsequently give it some styling if you want. I'm choosing 600 pixels, but feel free to adjust that to whatever you want it to be. This happens to be uh, around the area that I was in. This is in the Seattle area. And then how far zoomed in on the map do you want to be? Now down here, we have this geocoder and we're going to be taking a look at that in a little bit. But first, let's go ahead and skip that part just for now. And we're going to be talking about this location data. So what we're going to be doing on our map is rendering a marker and a pop up. Now, the cool thing about React Map GL, which is going to be containing our marker and our pop up, is that they can work independently. You can have a marker with no pop-up and you can have a pop-up that is just kind of sitting there with no marker. Now we're gonna wrap those together. Now the UI docs, I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to that. Go ahead and give you all the code that you need to understand how to render a marker and a pop-up together. Uh, it's gonna to be right here over in our doc site. I'll link that down into the description. 
But essentially you have uh, both of those elements here and we're just wrapping them. So that way we have a marker. It takes in a longitude and a latitude and on click method. And it's like, what do you wanna do when it gets clicked? Well, we wanna go ahead and show the pop-up and this is gonna be added in and taken care of by some state. And that state is essentially gonna bring in the pop-up component here with the same latitude and longitude as our marker. So those are tied together. When you click on the pop-up itself, it'll close it. Or when you click away, it'll close it also. We're gonna be doing something very, very similar. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and head back to VS Code so we can take a peek at what's going on. Okay, so back in our application, uh, we have this variable here, and that's gonna contain a bunch of our location uh, spots, for better, for lack of a better word. And underneath here, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in this marker with pop-up component. Now, again, it's pretty much exactly what we saw in the previous docs, but I did go ahead and add in a couple of additional fields. So in addition to the latitude and longitude, uh, we're gonna let our app users control the title, description, and image by passing those in as props. And you can kind of see that when we bring in the location with pop-up component down below, we have this information right there. So scrolling back up here, let's take a peek at what else is going on. Uh, we have that state, again, being managed by the component. Uh, this original event does stop propagation. That's used just to make sure that this component can, in fact, manage its own state. Uh, so again, a little bit of boilerplate code there. Next up, we have the actual marker and pop-up themselves. We talked about what they're doing. So then I'm going to go ahead and skip down to here where we're going to go ahead and bring in the flex component, which is going to center it. We have our image, which is going to make sure that the aspect ratio stays the same. And then we're going to make sure each image is 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Nothing too crazy going on. Again, it's a lot of boilerplate, but by having this in here, we have a really elegant way of adding in our marker with pop-up. We just sort of bring this in right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save everything with where it's at. I think we have pretty much everything except for our actual location data. Now, this can vary from application to application, right? Uh, you might have different locations that you want to have inside of your app. But what I'm going to do is put in all of my Seattle data right inside of here. And again, I'll link to the actual GitHub repo in case you wanna go ahead and pull this stuff into your application. That way you don't have to copy all these fields, but, but this way you can follow along and have all the same data that I have in the application. So I'm gonna click save. And let's see here, we have essentially, if we take a peek at one of these, it's just an object. It has the longitude and the latitude in here. Uh, it has an image from the vacation trip. I just stored those in an S3 bucket and made it uh, publicly readable. And then we have a title and a description. Now, if I go ahead and run the application, let's take a peek at what's happening here as soon as I press NPM start. And there we go. As you can see, we have our map component being displayed here. Amplify Seattle visit is that title. And then we have this geocoder and that's what this search bar is at the top. Note that this is just overlaid on top of our map and we get full functionality to go ahead and search for, uh, let's just say something like Pike Place Market. But look at this, like all these API calls are being made on my behalf. And all I had to do was set it up in the CLI and then add the geocoder component to my application. Now regarding the markers themselves, I wanted them all to be blue, but you can of course make it dynamic. You can change the colors for each one or all of them, it's up to you. And then I have the photos and the images being displayed right here. This is me when I was over at the spheres, uh, super, super nice and very warm botanical center. Uh, but then we have a couple of other locations, but we can scroll around. You can do everything you would expect to do with the map and note that this is the, this isn't the default map. This is the navigation map and we specified that in the CLI. So we have our team dinner here, just me and a bunch of the amazing Amplify folks that I work with. And then we also have uh, just a tour that I took, which was going through this bootleggers area. It was just super, super cool. But let's go ahead and stop talking about that for just a moment, because we have this geocoder that I wanna go ahead and mention just real quick. So if I open up my console from here, let's say that we're looking for Pike Place, which is that supermarket downtown when i click on that 
Okay, I get something logged here. And then it zooms me in to this marker. And again, this is all functionality that I didn't have to implement. When I click on it, it just says hello. Now flipping back to my code, let's take a peek at what's happening there. Okay, so in our geocoder component, we have this pop-up render. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because if you want access to do any kind of manipulation with the longitude and latitude that you search for, well, simply enough, paste in this function here. That'll give you access to the object that contains that information. And then you have full control to render out whatever you want inside of that marker. Now, what if you don't render anything, or rather, what if you don't specify this pop-up render component and you just have it like that? Well, let's go ahead and do the same search and we'll see what happens and what the trade-offs are. So back in my application, I'm gonna do that same search, which is Pike Place Market. And when I click on this, Nothing pops up in the console because we're not logging anything anymore. And in fact, when I click on this, I get the name and I get the address. Super, super cool. And if that's exactly what you want, well then you just have to add in that component and you're done. However, if you wanna do any further manipulation, again, it's that pop-up render function, which will give you the ability to have access to the longitude and latitude. But with that said, this is one of the easier tutorials that we've taken a look at. But you can imagine that this is the entry point if you wanted to do things like building out an Uber Eats clone um, or building out any kind of location-based service application. I just say Uber Eats because I know a lot of you have been asking me in the comments when we're going to be creating that project. And just so you know, it's going to be coming soon. That's pretty much with this one. Uh, if you like this kind of content where it's just shorter, focused, and more to the point, let me know. But if you like full blown out projects where we dive into multiple categories, definitely let me know that as well. I appreciate you all checking out the content and I want to make sure that I'm giving you exactly what it is that you want in a way that you best learn. So with that said, thank you all for your time. I'll catch you all next time, but let me know what kind of location applications are you looking to build? And do you want to see me build out a project in the future? I'll check you all in the comments. I'll see you all later. Till next time.